Fuel prices in Germany are heading toward an all-time high. The German Automobile Association says a liter of diesel now costs the equivalent of a buck seventy-nine. This is part of a wider global crisis, of course, in the fossil fuel industry. Though, as we speak, a barrel of Brent crude has come down slightly today, as you see it there, just over $82. Now, over to London, there are growing expectations that the Bank of England could raise interest rates as early as next month, after the governor of the institution said it would have to act to curb rising inflation. In the United States, meantime, inflation is being driven by things like energy. That includes gasoline prices, as you see there, uh, and also the jump in rental cars. Think about that, up now more than 40%. We want to bring in Alexander Six, he is co-CEO of the rental car company Six. And thanks so much for being here with us to try and parse through all this. You know, travel and leisure don't have to remind you, right? Really tough road to the recovery after the pandemic. And yet so much has changed in unanticipated ways. What are the challenges that this industry still faces, especially yours? As you see right there, cost of rental cars up 40%. Well, Paul, thanks for having me. It's a great privilege to be on the show. But obviously, the year 2020 was one of the toughest years for the car rental industry since World War II. You know, from one day to the next, demand collapsed dramatically as part of the travel and tourism industry. Car rental companies are certainly not among the winners of the corona crisis. But we tried to adapt quickly and go on the offensive. Um, we took out some uh, one billion in cost because uh, we had a second quarter of almost losses of 120 million Q2 2020. And uh, with that cost saving, we managed to bring up our profitability back to 70 million euros in Q3 already. Um, on, on the other hand, we went on the offensive. We have acquired 12 strategically important airport locations uh, from a distressed competitor. Uh, these investments have really paid off in Miami, where meanwhile the market leader in August and also the newly acquired New York locations are now uh, with a market share of approximately 8%. This is an incredible accomplishment for our six team around the globe and six the United States is now 30% higher in terms of revenue than pre-corona levels of 2019, and almost six times higher in terms of earnings versus Q2 2019. Uh, this trend is uh, also continuing globally, uh, where we just updated our guidance uh, back to earnings level of 2019 and maybe above. In terms of this being company specific though, there are so many challenges uh, ahead, right? Uh, in terms of maybe costs, trying to get labor, trying to get that kind of efficiency. I know you have heard from your customers, there have been a lot of bumps in the road. What do you think will make the difference going forward? Well, we do see an increase in pricing over the last uh, 24 months. Uh, this has mainly three reasons. Uh, first of all, there's a rebound of travel activities. People are eager to travel again and experience the world. Our demand, as I said before, in the United States is well above the uh, 2019 levels. And then obviously, uh, there's a shortage of supply in vehicles. Uh, due to massive defleets of all car rental companies during the corona crisis and obviously due to the global chip shortage that has largely affecting uh, the car rental uh, supply industry. And thirdly, there are structural or catch-up effects for car rental pricing. In the last 10 years, global airline and hotel prices went up by almost 30% or more and car rental prices were declining during the same time frame. We therefore believe that the car rental pickup in pricing is a long overdue catch-up effect and will somehow be necessary to sustain in the future. And it will be interesting to see how these sustainable, uh, how sustainable these changes are in the next two to three years. Yeah, and, and we at six. Sorry, just some of these costs ahead. though may end up really hampering some of your growth prospects. And if we move on to the issue of innovation, I know this idea of a robo taxi. It's just a pilot at this point, and yet it'd be hard to have imagined uh, that this will actually be embraced by consumers. What con convinces you that this is the direction your company should go in? Well, as you may know, we follow three main strategic pillars, which is probably our premium proposition, then our internationalization strategy, and first and foremost, our digitalization industry. We started that initiative already back in 2019, where we consolidated all our offerings of one single app, more than 250,000 vehicles, over 1.3 million drivers are online on our app. And the next step is obviously offering uh, autonomous vehicles. And to begin with, we plan to operate a fleet of fully electric autonomous vehicles right here in Munich. Consumers will be able to hail the autonomous vehicle through the Move It app as well as the Six app. We intend to start with the pilot as early as next year, as you mentioned, initially with an early rider program before starting our regular commercial operation after receiving all regulatory approvals. And this cooperation to us is truly a lighthouse project in Europe, demonstrating technical progress and capabilities of Intel, Mobileye, Move It and Six. This will be for us the basis uh, to expand the collaboration within Germany, Europe and other countries worldwide and improve our technological leadership in aerospace. 
Well, we'll see. We'll see whether people actually have the confidence uh, to be doing those so-called robo-taxis, and we'll continue to follow the development of that industry. Thanks so much for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you very much for having me.